Dear learners, welcome to Arpit in Library and Information Sciences at IIT Delhi. I am Professor Sujit Bhattacharya, Chief Scientist at CSIR NISTATS and Professor in the Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research ACSIR at NISTATS campus. Today I will be talking on understanding the structure and dynamics of research activity through publication based indicators. It is important from economic policy and strategic viewpoints to uncover the scientific and in innovative competency of nations or regions. Uncover the factors that are driving the cutting edge scientific research and innovation. Rich repository of scholarly work and influential reports in recent years have explored the above aspects such as important influential reports like UNESCO 2010, Demos 2007, 2008, Royal Society 2011. One important observation from the above studies is the extensive application of bibliometric data to uncover the research landscape of global science. Bibliometric data we primarily mean data that is analyzed and the key units of analysis are research publications and patents. Royal Society 2011 has spelled out the importance of bibliometric based indicators very recently. It is clear that bibliometric data alone do not fully capture the dynamics of the changing scientific landscape. However, they presently offer the only recognized and most robust methodology for doing so. This provides a strong rationale of using bibliometrics research data, bibliometrics analysis for capturing the research competency and research dynamics of different lab, research institutions and many other loci where research activity takes place. Research papers increasingly are used as proxy indicator to capture research competency and patents to capture inventive and innovative activity. Research papers form one of the key knowledge outcomes of a research laboratory as you all know, but increasingly in different knowledge based companies you find that research papers has become one of the very tangible outputs. Knowledge driven industries competitiveness rests on these types of intellectual assets papers, patents, etc. and they play a strategic role. Science and technology indicators there are primarily we can delineate it in terms of patents, research papers, innovation surveys, expert judgment, product announcement. Each has its own strength and each has its own weakness. The that is why it is important to know their strength and weakness and it is important when we do a deep analysis to use as best as possible the indicators, the different indicators which are there or even if you use one indicator to draw attention to the limitation of that indicator. Patents for example, provide a regular detailed and long term data of the inventive activity. But the weakness is that there is uneven propensity to patent across sectors and it is difficult to measure the value of a patent. Research papers are regular detailed and long term data is available similar to patents from various databases web of science, scopus and many country databases also which gives you national profile data. Most reliable measure to capture the research activity. But on the other hand, it can only capture research activity when it is in a published form. In innovation surveys, direct measures of in invention in innovative activity, it can lead to also a comprehensive coverage, but it is very difficult for the proper execution, the defining the scope, defining the variables and also it is very costly process. Expert judgment uses direct use of expertise. But finding independent expertise, judgment beyond expertise and biases are some of the weaknesses of using this type of indicator. Product announcement 
close to commercialization but misses in-house process innovation, misses incremental innovation. Then there is standards which is again very useful when we are looking at how technologies develop and how we can look at the ease of using a technology. But standards are again having their own limitations of capturing from very complex data with of standards the proper indications from that. Bibliometrics helps us to answer questions such as what are the major research areas, experts, institutions, regions, nations, grants, publications, journals in a particular research field. What areas are most insular? What are the main connections for each areas? What is the relative speed of areas? Relative speed means how fast the research area is moving, is dynamic, is static nature or not what new research areas are evolving, what is the impact of the research on the other field, how does funding influence the number and quality of publication etc. These types of answers are needed by funding agencies, companies, researchers and society at large. When we look at publication based indicators, we can deconstruct it under three major subjects. One is that output matrices which talks of scholarly output publication share, publication in top percentiles means which are and publication in top journal percentiles. Citation impact matrices tells you more of the impact of your research paper as measured through citations and it also has number of indicators like citation counts, citations per publication, H indices, field weighted citation impact citation share collaboration impact. Linkage matrices talks are very important because it talks of how various types of linkages that you can capture. Linkage between university industry if joint research is happening or not or the co-authorship across different institutions, cross country collaboration and you can also derive some more intellectual insights through measures like co-word analysis, co-citation analysis. We will talk about this in subsequent slides. Indicators constructed from research papers. Primarily we are trying to capture the volume of research papers is the main indicator here and it can be done through various different ways. I am just presenting a few important which are being utilized. One is the number of papers is based on volume, then it is the share of the number of papers can show how different institutions in a particular research field or overall how much different institutions are contributing to papers within a field total. Comparison of research output over the years show degree of contribution in the production of papers of different countries of within a country different institutions and look at the activity of a particular institution in terms of that research contribution. These are as you have seen that it can help us to useful for getting relative assessment, evolution of research output in different years, capture field wise performance. But all these indicators suffer from the they cannot measure real the impact. So, it can only measure the volume. Now, we go to this impact measurement which can be done based on citations. It consists of various types of indicators of citations. I will be presenting a few of them. Number of citations, it captures the citation, a paper received from other documents, citations per publication, it is a total citation received related to the total papers, citations received in the year of publication, how fast a paper is making an imp impact on the international community it would show and it we also is another important indicators the uncited papers that how many papers in spite of your that volume are papers which remain uncited over a period of time. So, it in a deflection of your the volume in a sense. 
these advantages are it gives an indication as I was already telling you of the citation impact, gives an indication of the average scientific impact, gives shows the influence of the work to some extent and can also indicate in a sense when it is uncited what are the papers that are not really making an influence. But there are disadvantages also which one has to understand. For example, number of citation does not take into account the, that older articles usually are more cited and citation rate vary between document types and subject areas to make it more robust of the older citations comparison we create different windows which of so that we can have a uniform comparison set. Citation per publication, citation rate vary between document types and subject areas. Citation received in the year of publication can be due to a topical area where the citations occur very fast or say you are looking at a particular current debate. Uncited papers can be due to few researchers or idea can be so novel that there are very few people who are working in that and that paper. So, the point of attention which I am drawing is that you have to be very careful while interpreting the results from these indicators. Indicators again continuing that some more indicators that are important are highly cited papers that number of papers that receive maximum citation during a research period. Here we try to create a window say 2 year window, 3 year window to look at which your are your highly cited paper. General impact factor, impact factor used to measure the impact of scientific journal where paper is published, but as you have to be careful that impact factor is field dependent because citations have strong variance across field wise. Number of papers in top ranked journals, it is important to capture this that which are the in the top ranked journals, how your papers are getting placed of a particular institution to see that really whether you are able to publish in these high impact journals or not, but does not take the size of analyzed time duration sometimes into account and there are other issues which are of really measuring what is that journal impact factor, it does it truly measure the impact of a journal or not. Co-author analysis talks of international collaboration, but again now in this co-authorship analysis or co-linkage analysis when I am looking at how many papers are linked together, how many papers are co-occurring together among different institutions. We have to be careful if we want to go further to look at what is the impact of this type of co-authorship or co-institutional linkages. Then there are some indicators I will not go into details into that, but they try to make you understand the structure of the research field, how the research field is structured. One of the indicators which is bibliographic coupling, articles with shared references are identified in this, in this method and it is assumed that articles that are very similar references have strong intellectual connections. Another sophisticated indicator is co-citation analysis involves tracking pairs of papers that are cited together in the source articles. When the same pair, pair, pairs of papers are co-cited with other papers by many authors, cluster of research paper began to form. The co-cited or core papers in the citation tend to share some common themes and helps to identify the research for key development in a field. Similar to this co-citation is co-word analysis where we try to look at co-occurrence of pair of items, words, keywords in different research papers to see that where we can look at thematically grouping the research papers. This is very important for your library and information science professionals. All 
the others are also important, but this particularly becomes a very useful sophisticated indicators to, to alert the, your community, the researchers at large that see these are the number of articles which are very thematically together or these are the journals which you must consider because they are thematically they are coming together. This whole co-citation, co-word will try to tell you and the big bibliography coupling will tell you. So, in a sense you are giving an ad more sophisticated and advanced inputs to the researchers and the community at large. As I am telling you, it is very important to look at the meaning and interpretation from publication based indicators. See, the same indicators can give very different results. When you look at the publication research output, say in a fast growing field of nanotechnology, I have taken 10 journals and you see that some journals because of this volume of papers in a particular year, I have taken a year 2011, that in a particular year you see that there are some journals like ACS Nano, Nanotechnology, Nanolators come in the top, whereas other like Nature Nanotechnology are not on the top of the, of the rank. But same when I look at it in the terms of total citations, we again see that the broad structure has not changed to that extent, but now Nature Nanotechnology comes much higher than many of the earlier ranking and it is among the top 3 now journals in this field. Same when I look at based on impact means impact here I am saying is that earlier I was taking the total citations here I am taking in a particular source year 2 years back when I look at the impact factor of that journal 2 years back how many of its papers were cited in this journal on a particular source journal. I normalize it to find out the impact factor and here then I see that nature nanotechnology becomes the most important journal in this whole set. After that it is nano today and ACS nano, they were not earlier in this when I was looking at the total output. So, you see that 3 different indicators gives you 3 different messages and 3 different perspectives for interpretation. So, another aspect which I had talked to you and which I will again further drill down through this uh, slide is to show you that uh, impact factor differ across subject fields. So, when I am saying that my paper or in a journal where I am publishing has a very high impact factor, a, it also I should be careful of looking at in which field it is there. For example, field like life sciences has high impact factor journals, but on the other hand fields like mathematics and computer sciences, computer science have journals where the impact factor is not high. The we are not talking of why the impact factor is not high here that will require much further explanation. But what I am trying to say is that each subject field has its own ways of creating the citations, own ways of linking with each other and that leads to your total impact factor of the of a field that how the linkages which results in the different journals having different variations of impact factor across the field. So, this field normalization is very important when I am looking at a particular type of paper. I should not compare in a sense that a paper of impact factor say of 2 with in a particular field of arts and humanities with the same a paper of impact factor of 3 in another field of life sciences where the impact factor is much higher there. For example, again this table will help you to understand it better. Journal like nature material, cell, circulation, they I have picked up journals from different representative journals from different disciplines and you see that journal of finance has an impact factor of 4.3. Whereas, a journal materials have the 
and the highest impact factor is for nature materials which is 35.749. So, if you are publishing in a paper in finance related paper and your paper is coming in a journal say of 3 impact factor is a very good journal in a sense and your paper also you can say that you have published in a very good impact factor journal. But on the other hand when you are publishing in an in material science and your the journal is of 3 impact factor I would not be saying it is to that way excellent journal in terms of impact then when I am comparing with the journal of finance which has an impact of 3. Some now I will use these indicators to give you some salient aspects of India's publication activity to see that how we use these indicators to construct different types of understanding of research activity only I will be presenting on now on this publication. You see that India now is the seventh most active country in terms of publication in 2018 when we are looking through the web of science database. USA and China are China is almost touching in terms of publication output of USA and a very significant progress of China over the years. But on the other hand when I qualify further with the 100 top cited papers in a field research field over across the impact. I see that India's has only 5 papers which are in the top 100 cited papers globally in 2018 and India's rank becomes 23rd. On the other hand USA maintains has a rank 1 and England becomes rank 2 and here China becomes rank 9. That means, we India is producing very high amount of research output, but we have to also see that it the papers of high citations we are not in the real in the top 10 or the top bracket to say. Publication activity of some advanced and BRIC countries tells you further on the output in a sense to tell you that which I was talking to you that how China has come become very close to USA in terms of publication share. China is now contributing 24.9 percent of the global publication share and USA is 25.5 percent. If you go back to 2012 you see that China was only contributing 14.8 percent whereas at that time USA was 24.5 percent. India has also significantly improved from 3.4 percent to 4.4 percent and here I have looked at some advanced countries and also the BRIC countries and you see that the BRIC countries like Brazil has already we have seen that in the BRIC Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, China to a large extent it has in increased its volume. India has also done reasonably well to increase its volume and also become uh, coming to a higher rank than an earlier projected time when it was 10th or so in 2012. Brazil has increased 1 percent or so more, but to that extent Russia and South Africa are not really making that amount of exertion and Russia research if you go back 10-15 years back Russia used to be one of the leaders in this research activity as seen through research outputs but not so now. The second point which I had stressed upon was the impact and here I am of the papers and here I have given you another slide to make that point and two points I am making I am I have looked at the best representative journals 
across different fields and to see how much India is publishing therein. You see that India has improved when I am looking in some of the indicators. India has improved in some of the journals, the publication volume, but in some journals I am finding that the volume has not increased to that extent. And But one in important fact that emerges from this table as you can see that that collaboration if you do more international collaboration there is a more chance of your papers coming into this international top impact journals. So, international collaboration is one of the key factors that drives international collaboration drives your publication what you call potential chance of your publication to get into these high impact journals. And in you see that in some of the papers in these top journals all the papers are in fact are internationally collaborative papers from India. One interesting indicator is that when you try to see that research output and you deflect it through the amount of research investment which you have done. It is a very broad indicator, but it gives some in a very interesting insight that the amount of money which you spent and if you see the research output of the country and the amount of research money which you spent on research GERD, you see that the India comes on the top in a sense India uses the least amount of money I would say we can say from here to produce its research output. But we have to take it with caution also that research paper is not the only indicator of your R&D investment, but still it gives a very interesting insight of that the frugality in, in a sense that the amount of the minimum resources which we use to produce research output and which we have also seen in our other fields of applied research and product development. In some top fields like nanotechnology, again USA and China is dominating, but India has also emerged as one of the a key player. So, the interesting aspect of India's research is that India's volume is also coming into the top areas of cutting edge research areas where India is also publishing very highly and it, the, here the rank is in the top 5 across the world. As you can see through this presentation, I have tried to give you some flavor of the bibliometric research and its application and I have tried to tell also that bibliometric approach requires deeper introspection to make it more acceptable to the scientific community and science policy decision making. Problem of bibliometric based research requires attention and can largely be categorized under methodological issues, issues of database that include data mining and visualization tools lack of integration of this bibliometric research across with other disciplines and need for adopting some a self critical approach also. We should be very critical also about when we are giving the final result I have tried to show you that we have to be very careful on interpreting the results. So, the point is that there is a need for introspection to correctly represent the multiple facets of scientific activity through publication based indicator need to respond to strong increase in demand. For example, research assessment practices, policy intervention, economics of science and technology and innovation and we have to also look at new forms of supply. For example, internet, online tools, sources and statistics, alternatives, this web based research output. So, our research bibliometric analysis has to continuously expand and capture the research output that are coming in various online modes in online repositories and in internet. 
assessment of scientific fund productivity evaluation is one of the very important exercise of bibliometric based indicators and this exercise of each of these in when we are looking at evaluation of scientific research and in a sense librarian information professionals should integrate with them should try to work together with this assessment and evaluation exercise when it is being done to make to reach out and make a strong assertion of their field and develop robust indications which as i have told you only one indicator looking at innovation surveys or just looking at one indicators of expert judgment is not sufficient and that develop this exchange and integration between different research traditions so with this i hope i have been able to convey to you some of these interesting insights and applications of bibliometric based approach you can contact me at sujit at nistats.res.in or sujit underscore academic at yahoo.com or for further for any observation comment and queries you can post on the discussion forum of our arpit thank you so much thanks for your attention mm -hmm.